Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Blender 4.3 is nearly here. In fact, it might actually be here by the time this video goes out. But today we're talking about some of these sculpting improvements coming in Blender 4.3. I thought that it was important enough to do a dedicated video about, which we don't always do for features, but it's something you might like. To keep it simple, there are a lot of performance improvements in the sculpt mode. This is something I know a lot of people want because I often see comparisons of Blender with other sculpting software like 3D Coat or ZBrush. And Blender is kind of known for falling behind in the performance department for a lot of features. So uh, this should be one that people like. And this this comes alongside a blog post by Hans and we're probably going to see these features explained in the feature release update video when Blender 4.3 does get here. But to give you the basics, let's take a look. Over the last several months, Sculpt Mode underwent a larger rewrite. Since the project has wrapped up, this post gives us an overview of what changed. So the basics are that entering Sculpt Mode is now five times faster in Blender 4.3, brushes are about eight times faster, and memory usage is reduced by about 30%. Hans also wanted to emphasize here that the interface has not had any changes with these updates. So this had no effect on the interface before and after the project Blender looked exactly the same. That's because it was all an under the hood change. They say typically this would raise some eyebrows because it often means developers are prioritizing work based on its effect on the code rather than the utility of the users. But I would say actually that performance improvements are utility for users. It allows you to do more in a shorter space of time. Or rather allows more types of projects to be done in Blender rather than something like ZBrush. You know, I think there are probably a lot of cases where people are in like photogrammetry workflows and they need to be making live sculpting changes to extremely high high density meshes. Maybe Blender wasn't an option before, and maybe it's just kind of now creeping into the space where it is. So I don't really think people will mind a lack of interface changes for something like this. But that's actually not entirely true because there are some interface changes, just not necessarily specifically for sculpting, more for brushes, because there are going to be some pretty big brush asset changes if we actually click through to a blog post here. Uh, this is something that we'll probably speak more about when the update video comes along. But this is going to be a pretty big one, I think, because it's going to assetify is even a word, turn into assets, they're brushes. I'm not too sure about the creation process for new brushes or like, well, because their assets will be easy to share. So we're gonna look into that more a little bit in the future. Okay, so let's talk about how they went around adding these performance improvements. So entering sculpt mode was known to be quite slow. Based on profiles, it also looked much slower than it should be since it was completely single threaded. So a profile, by the way, or a profiler, is a feature of software debugging where you can see where performance drains are happening as actions are being performed in a piece of software. It's very important in game development, for example, if you used Unity or any other game engine, you'll be used to like the profiler window and it will effectively tell you like which of your scripts running or your components are taking up the most time to calculate. It's very important for identifying where there are drains and performance that you might not have realized. In this case, we could see here in Blender 4.2, each row represents a CPU core. And what I'm assuming is that the orange represents the active time the core is being used. So ideally, if you were doing things properly multi-threaded, we'd have a far more equal distribution of things being used. But we can see these really long chunks here where things are being bottlenecked on one core. It turns out Blender was bottlenecked by two things, building the BVH tree that accelerates spatial searches and raycasting, and uploading the mesh data to the GPU for drawing. Improving the BVH build time. The BVH, by the way, means the bounding volume hierarchy, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know too much about that. It's just something that needs to be built behind the scenes. So they tried to improve this bottleneck. They added trivial multi-threading to the calculation of bounds and other temporary data, noting that this was the most significant change by giving them a five times performance increase. Beyond that, reducing memory usage improved performance by another 30%, simplifying the spatial partitioning of face indices using the C++ standard library was another 30%. And finally, changing the BVH from storing triangles to faces, because for a quad mesh, there are half as many faces as triangles, improved performance by about 2.3%. So the end result of this is if we have a look at this quick video, this is Blender 4.2 on a Ryzen 7950X on a plane with 16 million faces. So 4.2 on the left, 4.3 on the right. We see 4.3 is loaded and we can interact with it. And then 4.2 temporarily frozen and there it is. So following on from this, the rest of the blog post speaks more about the technical details of how they came about implementing these changes. And we won't read all of it, but we can see the important sections here. So there's information about drawing, so improvements to the drawing speed, removing two levels of function call indirection for multi-res data upload, roughly double the performance, and removing function calls for every mesh edge gave another 30%. So if you're more interested in the technical aspects about how they came about the improvements, then Hans has done a pretty good job here of outlining it. And I think this is actually quite nice for people that want to get involved 
with coding for Blender because one thing I've noticed as well is that they even give a little section here, lessons for developers, some things to keep in mind. So I appreciate that the blog post has been written in a very, very transparent way. So the BVH tree design, previously the sculpt BVH tree, often referred to as the PBVH, paint bounding volume hierarchy, was a catch-all storage for any data needed anywhere in sculpt mode. To reduce the code spaghetti factor <laughs> and clarify the design, we wanted to focus the BVH on its goal of accelerating spatial lookups and recasting. To do that, we remove references to mesh visibility, topology, positions, colors, masks, and viewport clipping planes, back pointers to the geometry, etc. from the BVH tree. All of that data was stored redundantly there, so whenever it changed, the BVH tree needed to change too. So a lot of cleanups. I suppose this is a pretty good demo of how BVH regions are used. So to evaluate a brush, regions, BVH nodes, of the mesh are first tested roughly for inclusion within its radius. For every vertex in each of these regions, we calculate a position, translation, and the brush's strength. The vertex strength includes more granular filtering based on the brush radius, mask values, water masking, and other brush settings. Prior to this project, all calculations were performed vertex by vertex. Because the mesh data is stored in large contiguous arrays, it's inefficient from a memory perspective to process all attributes for a particular vertex at once. Now, for those of you that rely on multi-resolution sculpting, there has been some help there as well. So most of these performance improvements were targeted at base mesh sculpting, where there was more low-hanging fruit. However, multi-res changes followed the same design, and there were a few more specific optimizations for it too. Most significantly, moving a struct of arrays format for positions, normals, and masks gave a 32% improvement to brush performance and a simplified code. Very good. Hans has added a picture here from last year's conference talk. However, some multi-res workflows still have bottlenecks remaining, like subdivision evaluation or bad performance of very high subdiv levels. So again, more details are on the blog post. If you're interested in helping out with the Blender project, then worth having a read. But I just thought I'd help to publicize it and let you know that there are some really nice sculpting improvements coming. So if you made it this far through the video, consider subscribing to stay updated on Blender news and other fun things. Make sure to put the notification bell on all. You can support the Blender project by signing up to the Dev Fund or the Blender Studio. We can get some extra resources. Whereas I also make stuff for Blender, I have a variety of free and paid add-ons and resources on my store page. But yeah, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.